So we'll finish up the tortoise uh, here in, uh, this is a 1, 3. So remember that the function was that distance was a function of time, and the distance related to the time with 2 to the t exponent. So we started this exercise by calling out times and then calculating distances. Now it says if the tortoise plans to watch the race at 64 meters, how long to wait until Shelley runs past? Explain how you know. Well, we know that the distance is 64, and on the other side of the equation is just 2 times t. So we need to find the t that makes this true. So let's just see how many times do we need to multiply 2 together to get 64. That would tell us um, what the answer is. So this is going to start with 2 times 2, which gives us 4, times 2 more, giving 8. So I just kind of made this right here. There's 4 times 2 gives 8. 2 more is 16. Multiply by 2 is 32. Multiply by 2 is 64. So you would just count the 2s. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So at t equals 6, and the reason why is because 2 to the 6 is equal to 64. So if how long and how long must they wait to get to 1,100, uh, 1,024? So I'm just going to take that 64, which is at time t equals six, and keep multiplying it by twos. So let's see what we get here when we do that. There's the seventh one, and we would get 128 out of that. And so let's just keep moving forward. Multiply by two again. That's going to give us 256. Multiply by two. That's our ninth two. We end up getting 512. Multiply that by 2, which is the 10th one. We get 1024. So we would see just by multiplying it out, it's time t equals 10. And you also say just at 10 seconds. That'll get us the, um, the answer. So now we're going to draw a graph. We're going to end up with this graph, and that's distance on the horizontal axis and time on the vertical axis. So this is the independent variable. Time is the dependent variable with the way we plotted it. Previously, we did it the other way. It was time on the horizontal axis and distance, and it went up like that. It curved upward. So we'll just keep that in mind here. And so this chart that we had was that... Right, we just really flipped our two columns here. So distance 2 would be occur at t equals 1 or 2 to the first power. Distance 4 would be at 2 squared. Distance 8 would be at 2 to the third. 16, 4, 32, at 5. So I intentionally left the scales the same here so that we could see. There's our data point. There's 16, comma 4. There would be 8, 3, and there would be 4, 2. And so how long, uh, if they stood at 220 meters? And so I just need to continue that table. So 64 was at 6. We found that in the previous problem. 128 was at 7. And 256 meters was at 8 seconds. So how long to get to 220? It's going to be somewhere between seven and eight most likely going to be it'll end up being closer to um most likely closer to eight it's a little different because it's not a linear scale but and so these are um what's the relationship d to t in the graph above d of t in the graph above the d of t would be it was the exponent going this way right two to the t and t as a function of d all right, which is what we've just calculated, is the inverse of it. And so the way that we get there, and this is, we did a little bit back in 1.4 at the end of that Desmos, there was some, uh, there was a video on that. And so the way that we get this exponent down, that we can then isolate it and solve for it, is we have to take the log of both sides. And so this is a log property. And so we're going to take the log at base 2. And there's the log at base 2. And so when we do that, and the, the way we read this is that when we take the log of a base of a number, so the log base of a number, and so we read that as 2 to what power 
equals the answer inside the parentheses. So we will continue to work on, on logs, and so this is definitely not uh, the last time you'll see something like that. But this, we take log base 2 of 2 to the t, you end up with time. But on the other side, you take the log of d, which is the distance, and now that's the quantity that you're going to calculate. And so you could, um, this is logarithmic form. The inverted way would be exponential. This is the exponential form. Uh, and so we'll calculate logarithms quite a bit. So let's just consider that function 2 to the x. Now just calling right the independent variable x. That was an exponential. That's an exponential curve. So the domain, we can put any value in for x from negative infinity to infinity. Um, but we can only get out numbers between 0 and infinity. So the domain goes, x goes from negative infinity to infinity. But 2 to the negative infinity is 0. And 2 to the infinity is infinity. So the range would be from 0 to infinity. And uh, is f of x invertible? It is. We need the log operator to do that. And so there's our summary. There's f of x. And there's the inverse of it. This is the logarithmic plot. Um, and so you kind of see here what's the domain of f inverse of x? What's the domain of that function? All right, that's the x values. That goes from 0 to infinity. Right? And the y values, the range goes from minus infinity to infinity, which is the exact opposite of f of x. So a little bit more with inverses, right? If the function f, right, if with an, in, with an argument of 3 gives us the result of 8, the inverse of f, right, evaluated at 8, has to give us 3. And we know that because the inverse undoes what the function did. So the function took 3 and made 8. The inverse, the inverse function has to take 8 and turn it back into 3. And so you end up with right, the exact same logic here. And we would know that because those are, those are inverses of each other. And then symbolically down here, if f of a equals b, then f inverse of b has to equal a. And the answer will not change if f of x is a different function. The only thing that might happen is it might not be invertible, but as long as it's invertible, yeah. So there's our definition, really, a definition of an inverse.